Dear learners, welcome to the module. To remind you, this video is a part of the module, the basic concepts of ODL and the changing nature of ODL. Hope that you have watched the earlier videos in this module. In this video, we shall discuss about the functions of ODL, the advantages of ODL and its changing nature. Here we shall have a look at the functions of open and distance learning institutions. One of the main functions is to obtain and manage money and resources. The institutions must operate in a grant sustained and cost recovery mode to ensure smooth functioning. The institutions are also responsible to develop or acquire courses and programs with the help of the money that they have obtained. They can even lease out courses from other institutions if it facilitates the effective use of resources. Ample attention and time must be given to the full-scale development of courses and their content. The institutions can hire single authors or a team of experts for course development and analysis. Managing learning population. Next, the ODL institutions must be able to manage its learning population and facilitate their learning. The first step is to identify the prospective learning population and being able to recruit and promote their learning. The learners must be given a choice of courses, complete details of every course, and they must be given complete assurance of the credibility of the courses offered by the institution. The institutions should promote a two-way communication between the learners and the institution. The learner must be provided facilities like library, laboratory services, etc. The evaluation and feedback procedures are also very important. Providing learner support and updating the digital resources. In a system like the ODL, providing learner support plays a key role. The system must be able to provide the learners with both academic and personal support through different means like advice, counseling, tutoring, grading, examining, etc. It is important to grant credentials to the learners and this process should be done by engaging professional associations and credible external agencies. The ODL system must pay specific attention to constantly updating its resources by revisiting, evaluating and revising the procedures, programs, courses and content at regular intervals. The staff must be oriented and trained with the emerging technology and distance learning operations. Advantages of ODL now we shall take a look at a few advantages of ODL. ODL helps the learners overcome the problem of distance. This can be extremely helpful in cases where the learners might either be unwilling or be unable to attend regular classes. For example, the learners in rural areas or war prone areas. ODL also helps the learners learn beyond the constraints of time and scheduling. This helps particularly those learners who work part time or full time. The learners can keep up with their commitment socially and other professional commitments while still being able to pursue their education. ODL does not require brick and roof infrastructure like the traditional system. It can make the best use of limited spaces. Enrollment in the ODL is also relatively easy. It means that it is flexible enough to enroll a large number of learners who are dispersed in large or small groups across different regions. ODL can also make the best use of a limited number of teachers. This is because ODL can use these teachers for a large number of students who are dispersed across different regions even if the teachers are geographically concentrated to one particular area. ODL can manage the scarcity of teachers and better than the traditional system. The changing nature of ODL. The ODL system has changed significantly since its conception. It is mainly because of the change in ways education is delivered to the learners. Both the traditional and the distance modes of education have utilized the development in information and communication technology to help its learners in better ways. The learning material has evolved from the traditional print form. It is now available to learners in new forms such as audio, video and multimedia content. Ebooks have become the trend. The traditional classroom setup has been replaced by video conferencing facilities. The availability of OER, Open Educational Resources, boosted the ODL system to a great extent because it made educational resources available to learners all across the world, which means education became cheaper and more accessible even to the poorest of learners. The establishment of MOOCs have also added to the numbers in ODL. It is the latest trend because of technological advancement and the emerging shift to the digital space. The ODL system is able to offer a lot of short-term courses with specific focus on select skill sets which the traditional system does not offer. New online platforms that complement the ODL system have come up. They help the learners to interact and collaborate even without meeting. Even the government has stepped up to the needs of the ODL learners by providing platforms like SOYAM. There are also other platforms like the Moodle LMS that significantly help the open learners. 
The government across the world have acknowledged the significance of the ODL system and are moving towards the development of a unified scheme of assessment and evaluation, which shall be effective in both the traditional systems and the distance mode of education, thus creating an equilibrium between the learners. Many international organizations, which include the UNESCO, Commonwealth of Learning, International Council for Open and Distance Learning, ICDE, etc., advocate and promote the ODL system. This brings us to the end of this video. Given here is a list of resources, the help of which this module has been created. You may please visit the resource for reference and a better understanding of the concepts. This is the end of the module, basic concepts of ODL and the changing nature of ODL. Kindly follow the other videos for more information on other modules. Thank you.